Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I'm talking all things mulch. Uh, this video is kind of a continuation of several videos that I put up in February, and I'll explain why. Before I mulch in the early spring, uh, I like to do whatever pruning I'm gonna do. So if I'm pruning shrubs, if I'm pruning tree limbs, if I'm pruning perennials back, grasses back, I like to get all of those things accomplished. So there's a couple pruning videos uh, from last month that you can go back and reference on that. And then general cleanup, removing large sticks and debris. Um, if there's a, uh, any uh, edging that needs to be done, I showed that in a video, just how I go about edging along my turf edges. Uh, and just a general prep leading up to mulching that will prevent, that will keep you from having to do these projects after and ruining your mulch job. So that, that's the purpose of that. I'm using four different types of mulch in this landscape, and I want to go through those now. The first of the four mulches that I'll show you are wood chips, and you may have seen a video just specifically on wood chips before you see this one. Uh, when I started this landscape off, I actually put down a little bit of compost and then I put wood chips uh, everywhere. I was able to get a free load from a guy that was working down the street and I was able to get uh, chips from a maple that was taken down in this front yard that was diseased and I used those to kind of start off laying the base for the rest of this project. This, this, this landscape is 90% clay and then toward the back of the property it gets a little bit sandy but um, out here it's mostly clay. I can now dig down three four inches and just have and have beautiful beautiful soil that was built using some compost and wood chips. You don't even need the compost step but just five or six inches of wood chips down initially wait a few months for that to break down a bit and you will be amazed how much you can improve your soil. What goes on here is this material is actually a little bit harder for the microbes to break down. So it puts them in some sort of overdrive and just and just almost supercharges what's happening in the soil. And then we can just kind of rely on earthworms um, and other things moving throughout the soil to take some of this broken down humus material uh, after this breaks down some down deeper into the soil and mix them together. So I don't go, I don't till. Uh, that that wasn't that wasn't in the program at all. Um, I basically laid out these beds edged them, put down some compost, put down some wood chips, and then I waited a period of time uh, and my soil greatly improved from that. You have seen me till twice since I've been on this project here in Raleigh. Uh, once in the vegetable garden initially, because I, don't, I didn't have six months that I wanted to wait for something to break down to improve that soil. So I tilled it the first time, tilled some compost in. Since then it has not been tilled. I also tilled to put in two sodded areas for turf in the front garden and the back garden. Again, project needed to get underway, so I needed to get the soil improved as quickly as possible. I don't typically like to till, though. It brings up weed seeds, uh, and it kills, it, you know, it kills everything you bring up to the top. So, uh, you know, I've always said tilling is killing. So I limit the amount of tilling I'm doing, and I basically improve the soil by adding organic material and feeding it from the top down. So a second thing I use as mulch is compost. I buy compost uh, in a bag from Soil Cube that's out on uh, that's out it's out there by the street. I use it for my containers. I use it for growing potatoes in grow bags. I use it on top of my vegetable garden. I use it in these annual beds along these bed edges. So a lot of use for compost in this landscape. And initially, this entire space was covered in a small amount of compost, maybe an inch thick, before the wood chips went down. But here's an example of it being used as a mulch. Uh, I, take, I use all of my bed edges around the turf in this landscape to plant annual flowers and perennials that I use uh, as annuals. And so I'm top dressing just this bed edge with compost around these existing pansies. These pansies will be converted to other things during the summer. There's garlic here. And then I'm doing the same thing in the vegetable garden each time a uh, new vegetable crop is going in, I put a small amount of co compost on the top and it does several things. It's obviously feeding the soil, feeding those plants, but it's also uh, a weed barrier and, uh, and it's for moisture retention just like any other mulch would be. So every fall nature offers everyone mulch and then they proceed to rake it up, put it all on the sidewalk for the city to take away and then they buy, uh, then they buy mulch. And, and I'm referring to leaves. Uh, leaves actually make a great mulch. I don't have an excessive amount of leaves. If I had really piled up leaves, if I had a lot, I, I really one tree doing most of the leaf drop in this back garden space. If I had several oaks doing this and they were this deep, I probably would uh, 
run them through a shredder and uh, reduce the mass because uh, you can run you can run these through a through a shredder and reduce them probably by tenfold. Uh, you know, you can take ten bags of unshredded leaves and make one bag of shredded leaves, something like that, and then reuse it. I don't have that issue. I just have basically a thin layer of leaves that are laid down back here, and I leave them in place. They're great for insulating the plants during the winter time. They're great for preventing some of those uh, weeds that are really exploding in your landscape right now, like chickweed and henbit. Uh, and it just overall, they're the mulch that nature provides itself. I mean, the trees lay those leaves down on their own roots for a reason, uh, which kind of goes to you know over to mulch timing uh, here in. Uh, here in the south, I really want to prevent a lot of my summer, uh, a lot of my summer weeds, and that's why I'm in the process of putting this cap on all of my beds right now with mulch, compost, you know, various mulches and 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 also compost, just preventing some summer weeds. If you're only going to mulch once a year, and I was in much further north in colder areas, fall might actually be the best time after the leaves have fallen, just to uh, help insulate your plants, but. Um, for me, I'm actually doing, I'm actually mulching twice a year. I'm actually mulching now, right at the beginning of March before my soil temperature's warm enough, up enough for my spring and summer weeds to start. And then I'm doing again in the fall, but I'm using a small amount. And so, uh, you know, keep that in mind. I'm not sitting here putting four inches of mulch on here twice. I'm barely putting down an inch and a half or so of this hardwood mulch that you'll see in a minute. But again, leaves are great mulch. Uh, leave them in place. You can pull them back from your plants in the early spring if they piled up around them too much. Um, or again, if you have just a really excessive amount, maybe you do need to dispose of some, but leave some in place. I mean, this is, this is, um, these are helping build soil like anything else. And I'm just going to mulch right over the top of them with a more decorative mulch. Okay. Real quickly, a few of the tools I always find to use for this trenching shovel. This is what I edged the turf areas with before I got started and I use it to you know shovel the compost here into these bed edges you got if you have annuals and that garlic and things like that already there you got to get in there with your hands a bit so a pair of gloves um, is a good idea a pair of gloves is a good idea if you don't if you don't use a lot of these tools a lot of the times your hands will definitely get calluses if you don't use uh, gloves uh, if I tell somebody this is the best tool for this job. I know what feedback I will get down below. So I'm gonna tell you the tools that work best for me based on about 15 years of spreading mulch. If you can get your mulch, wood chips, compost, I don't care what bulk material it is, if you can get it dropped on a hard surface, meaning a driveway or a road or something like that, uh, this sh no shovel is the best tool for scooping it up. I've shown it many times. Um, and again, I have in 15 years of landscaping, probably spread more mulch than most people watching. So this tool is fantastic. Uh, eventually you just wear it out, it's aluminum. So you just, you know, I'll wear one of these back about four or five inches and then replace it. Uh, of course, there are all kinds of forks that people use, you know, for this type of project from, you know, broad forks and, you know, um, all, all different types of forks that can be used. If you end up dumping it in a turf area or someplace like that, you almost certainly have to use a fork and not uh, not a, not a snow shovel. I'll show you another use for this fork um, in just a minute uh, on the uh, on the hardwood mulch covering the leaves, and then I just use a garden a stiff garden rake, and uh, I have a technique I'll show you real quick here. Uh, let me find a uh, let me find a mulch pile. Uh, Steph will follow me where I I just take you know the pot the pile of mulch is here. It's been dumped. It's been dumped into the bed. And I'll just take and do this right here, okay? This technique works really well. Just these short, you know, short swings at it, just like that. And we'll make it perfectly smooth, okay? Uh, works really, 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 really well. I do go back at the end of any of these mulching activities and pull it back, you know, from the base of my plants. It's easy to throw too much mulch around a plant. I'll just go back and spread it out. But this works really well for covering these piles, for covering these piles of leaves, just a slow, steady action with that garden rake. Okay. That technique I just showed you for raking the mulch works great if the leaves are super thin and they're not piled up. You will find though that when you're raking places out, you'll pull some leaves up and uh, some, some will still be uncovered. And I'll just take a fork with some extra, with some extra leaves. I have to be super careful. I have so many bulbs coming up. Uh, in this bed space. If I've got a spot where the leaves weren't completely covered, you know, in the process of mulching, you can just drop it straight on the pile 
just like that and it covers them up beautifully but that's a that's a pretty quick technique for uh, making sure you get the rip the little spots that you didn't quite get covered you know while you were uh, using the rake i do use a hand trowel to move the compost around some of these smaller things i use this small cart for the compost because it's quite a bit heavier than the uh, mulch is i have the big dump cart that you've seen many times for the uh, mulch this landscape the plants are getting bigger and bigger and the spaces are narrower and narrower. I think that's probably the last time I'll be able to use that dump cart out here because my paths are getting narrower and narrower. Holly's back here saying, let me out, let me out. Um, I want to come outside. So Holly and Griffin uh, demanded uh, to come outside. And so, and so now they are. Again, I, I think this will be about the last time I'm using that dump cart. Um, the, uh, I, need a, I need a narrower wheelbarrow as all of these spaces kind of get tighter and tighter as these plants uh, fill out uh, this year and uh, next. The last type of mulch, and you just saw me raking it out, uh, is this hardwood. Uh, this is triple shredded hardwood mulch, uh, and I've shown it many times. It's just hardwood bark that's been, um, that's been through the shredder three times. That's what triple shredded hardwood means. Uh, when I order it you know, from a mulch company like this, it's almost all bark. Uh, there is some wood fiber in it, but it's mostly the bark that's been shredded. And I really like this material. Some of the bagged products, especially like the bagged brown mulch and stuff, I see it's almost all wood. And so I don't know if it's chipped up pallets or where that material is coming from, but I definitely don't like it as much. It doesn't break down as readily. It seems to float a lot more. This triple shredded hardwood, because it has varying sizes, you know, varying lengths of pieces, uh, it tends to mat down and become, you know, almost an impervious, you know, uh, place for the weed you know weeds can't come up through there but it does let water through okay unless you put down way too much of it people people do sometimes put way, go way overboard with it but if you're only putting down a couple inches of it uh it it holds soil moisture in you know helps prevent weeds and the various sizes of it and the kind of stringiness of it keeps it from washing away where some of those uh wood wood fiber mulches um, you know, do, do wash. So again, that's the reason I really, really like this material. I'm sure you can see from this video how many projects I actually have going on uh, at one time. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel to follow along with that. There's plants closing in everywhere as well and seeding going on. Just a lot, a lot happening here. Uh, for, there's a, a website called landscapecalculator.com that you can go and put in the amount of square footage you're mulching, the depth at which you want to mulch, if you're just going to put down two inches, three inches, whatever it is, and it will tell you the amount of cubic yards of mulch that you need to order if you're ordering it from someplace. Um, very helpful website. Again, just going through a list of reasons, you know, to keep the ground covered, uh, you know, with organic material. There are inorganic materials that people mulch with as well, things like lava rocks and gravel and rubber mulch and you know <laughs> other things that people people use in their beds but i do like to use organic materials holly has got all kinds of projects going on next to me over here uh i like to use organic materials because they do break down and uh, become fertilizer they become part of you know you know part of the fertilizing uh re regiment that i'm that, I, that i'm feeding my plants with they're also food for for beneficials so for mycorrhizal fungi you know it protects it protects that from you know sun scald you know this you know your 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 living organisms under the ground if the sun is hitting the soil directly the soil will heat up enough to damage those microbes and so keep that in mind that's part of what you're that's part of the shield that you're putting down of course it's a weed barrier and a moisture barrier and just i can go on and on and obviously it's decorative you know it's on and on i can go and tell you and it's really the basis of everything Okay, feeding the soil, improving the soil is the basis for every, every gardening activity after. If, you, if you're only putting, if your entire garden plan is what plants do I want to put here, um, then you're missing the biggest step of all, which is let's get the soil moving in the right direction. We can get the soil moving in the right direction. The shopping for plants part is the fun part. Okay, um, so, you know, save it, you know, prep, you know, Figure out where your beds are going. If you can start with wood chips, start with wood chips um, and get the soil going in the right direction. And then picking, like, like I say, picking out the plants is the fun part. You know, um, they don't have to go exactly where you want them either. You can move them later. I'll wrap this up in a spot where you can see I've got the wood chips that I'm actually using for my paths this year. 
This is gonna break down and I'm actually use these as compost later and then I'll put new wood chips in these paths. I'm also elevating some uh, my grow bags up on wood chips this year. And as those wood chips break down, they'll be compost for the vegetable garden as well. Then you can see the compost that I'm using on these bed edges, which again, this will be summer annuals. You'll see this just come back to life. Um, you know, my annual display along these bed edges was amazing uh, last summer. Hopefully it will be again this summer. Then you can see the hardwood mulch back here and you can see how these three also contrast nicely together. I mean, they look great together and you can see a few leaves poking through the mulch back there. Well, I haven't quite gotten it, uh, quite, haven't quite gotten that uh, wrapped up yet, but there you go. There's the four types of mulch that I'm using in my landscape and how they uh, positively affect my, uh, my gardening. Thanks for watching.